On the 10th date of our adventure, we arrived at Madrid, the capital of Spain. Madrid is the political, cultural, and commercial center of Spain. Please follow us to explore majestic Madrid. We will show you the top places to visit. Royal Palace of Madrid is the current official residence of the Spanish royal family. Built in the 18th century under the reign of King Felipe V, it melds Baroque, Classical, and Neoclassical styles in its design, boasting an astounding 3,418 rooms. When we entered the palace, we were greeted by a double ramp marble staircase. The main staircase, adorned with sculptures and bathed in natural light, tells tales of religion, arts, and philosophy through a stunning ceiling fresco. This pastel ceiling fresco, lying above the grand staircase, was by Rococo artist, Corrado Giaquinto, called the triumph of religion and the arts. As we ascended the staircase, we entered the Hall of Columns. The Hall of Columns was a visionary monarch's dream, a symbol of the kingdom's might. Its towering columns, meticulously carved with intricate designs, stand as a testament to enduring craftsmanship. This architectural gem has weathered wars, hosted regal gatherings, and bore witness to historic meetings, shaping the fate of nations. Its painted ceiling, depicting the glory of Spain, and ornate mirrors that amplify its splendor, make it a timeless marvel. The Hall of Columns has played a crucial role in history. Over the years, it hosted extravagant banquets, royal receptions, and grand celebrations. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to take videos in other rooms of the palace. We encourage you to visit this palace, to experience its splendor yourself. Before we continue, if you wish to watch more our trips in different countries, please subscribe our channel. Opposite the Royal Palace is the Grand Almudena Cathedral. The cathedral is unique as it was built in two different architecture styles. The exterior of the cathedral, specifically the main facade, clearly shows the Neo-Renaissance style which highlights the time it took to build. But the interior of the cathedral is Neo-Gothic. It features large and colorful stained glass windows and painted ceiling with gold leaves. The ceiling paintings are distinct. They are contemporary modern style, setting the cathedral apart from other Catholic churches. In the 60s, the construction of the Aswan High Dam threatened various monuments and archaeological sites in Egypt. UNESCO made an international call to save this historical legacy. In a gesture of gratitude for Spain's assistance in saving the Abu Simbel temples, Egypt generously donated the Temple of Dibad to Spain in 1968. The Plaza Mayor is a historic gem. Dating back to the 15th century, Plaza Mayor began as the town's main market.
This municipal building, Casa de la Panaderia, on the north side of the plaza has overcome three major fires in history. The majestic statue of Philip III on horseback has stood at the center since 1848. The plaza mayor has seen it all. From historical executions to today's lively Christmas markets, bullfights, soccer games, and stamp collecting markets on Sundays and holidays. Madrid is a paradise for diners and shoppers. The San Miguel Market is a covered market within walking distance from Plaza Mayor. The market is not a traditional grocery market, but a gourmet tapas market. Over 30 different vendors sell a wide variety of freshly prepared tapas, hams, olives, baked goods, and other foods. Beer, wine, and champagne are also available. There is a restaurant, which every visitor must visit. Sabrino de Botton in Madrid is recognized as the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. We have the privilege of having the Botton history expert to give us a private tour of the restaurant. Thank you very much for joining me and joining us. Firstly, to the oldest restaurant in the world. Okay. Okay. I saw that's, that's it. Okay. You've seen that? And that's true, but this is just according to the Guinness Book of Records law or rules. Okay. This person opened their doors back in 1725, mm -hmm. which means that in two years we'll be celebrating our 300th anniversary, which is more or less my age. More or less. More or less. Okay. Good, good. Well, by the way, in order to get that certificate done, they needed to follow a couple of rules. The restaurant has been always a restaurant as a business since day number one. No other business, okay? No shoe shop or day change between being a restaurant into some other business. No, always been a restaurant. So the first rule, tick, tick, correctly confirmed. Second rule is that this restaurant, they haven't closed their doors a single day, not a single day, only during the COVID era, the COVID time. Because, uh, well, that doesn't count according to the Guinness Book of Records because the whole planet was under the lockdown, okay? So even during three years of war, we had a very famous Spanish Civil War, 1936-39, to 39, the restaurant was open, and I'll mention that when we go inside, okay? The restaurant is famous for its specialty dish, roast suckling pig. Apart from using the original recipes, the restaurant has also kept the flame burning in the oven continuously, never to be extinguished. The restaurant's cellar dates back to 1590, making it older than the restaurant itself. These painting. It's a beautiful painting from the reserve of the Prado Museum. A beautiful old Christian wall. Guys, that wall just passed through this area back in 1561. It doesn't exist anymore. It was dismantled before 1700. But when we go to the basement, that's what I told you that you have to see the basement because it's beautiful. You will see one big portion of one of the towers. It is the tower section. Many celebrities have dined here and sent wonderful gifts to the restaurant. This is from the first cartoonist belonging to Mr. Disney's team. He was Ruben Procopio. By the way, Mr. Disney has never been here. But Mr. Ruben Procopio was a very good friend of the Gonzalez family and he came here very old man 1992 and he just draw his piece of art his of course his Mickey Mouse this is an original letter from 
Nancy Reagan, okay, the first lady of the United States back in 1985. What a delight to join Her Majesty Queen Sophia for lunch at El Restaurante Botin during our trip to Spain. Everything that was told about your family, um, historic, a charming historic establishment is true, and I deeply appreciate the gracious hospitality I received during my much too brief visit. You and your staff helped to make my stay in Madrid most memorable, mm -hmm. etc. etc. The President joins me in sending all of you our best wishes. Sincerely, Nancy Reagan. Sabrino de Botton is mentioned in Ernest Hemingway's novel, The Sun Also Rises. Hemingway was a frequent diner at Botton. This is the Hemingway table, guys. Uh, he normally had lunch or dinner close to the corners because he was scared that something was going to happen behind his back. Mm. At a certain moment, he was stabbed from behind. No. We were offered to dine at Hemingway's table. We thought that we were not qualified as we were handicapped at literature. So, we dined at the basement to enjoy the roast suckling pig. Madrid is the political center of Spain. Plaza de las Cortes is not an ordinary plaza. The Congress of Spain is located at the plaza, so as some important financial institutions. It was the birthplace of the Occupy movement. In 2011, thousands of public workers who have seen their salaries slashed, protested in front of the Spanish Congress. The protest sparked an occupied campout by Spanish youth in the nearby Puerta del Sol. The youth occupied the Puerta del Sol. The movement continued to evolve in Spain, where the economy was struggling with unemployment at 24%. Five months later, American protesters stormed an occupied Wall Street in USA. The Occupy movement was born. We had encountered the protest tradition of Spain. We visited Madrid on the International Woman Date, March 8th. We met thousands of ladies marching and protesting for their equal rights that day. They protested with the symbol of feminist triangle. The feminist triangle demands three things. Equality in political dimension, gender equality in social dimension, and autonomy in personal dimension for women. It underscores the comprehensive nature of the feminist movement in striving for gender equality and dismantling systemic barriers that hinder women's rights and opportunities. Good jobs, sisters. Madrid is the cultural center of Spain. Many of us may have read the famous novel, Don Quixote. It was the location of the residence of Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, the author of Don Quixote. Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra was an early modern Spanish writer, widely regarded as the greatest writer in the Spanish language, and one of the world's preeminent novelists. The Spanish written on the road state that the original building in which Cervantes lived has collapsed. The building was rebuilt. Prado Museum, celebrating its 200th anniversary in 2019, is a prominent attraction in Madrid. The Prado's collection includes 8,600 paintings and over 700 sculptures, 
featuring masterpieces from Spanish, Italian, and Flemish schools. There are many masterpieces that you cannot miss. The Garden of Earthly Delights by Bosch Hieronymus is described as Bosch's most complex and enigmatic creation. Bosch painted three scenes that share the single common denominator of the concept of sin, which starts in Paradise or Eden on the left panel with Adam and Eve and is punished in Hell in the right panel. The center panel portrays a false paradise of lust, conveying a pessimistic message about the fragility of sinful pleasures. The 3rd of May 1808 is a painting by Spanish artist Francisco Goya, completed in 1814. It depicts the scene of execution of the Spanish resistance by Napoleon's armies during the occupation of 1808 in the Peninsular War. The painting's content, presentation, and emotional impact make it a groundbreaking and archetypal representation of the horrors of war. It marks a clear break from convention, diverging from both Christian art traditions and traditional depictions of war. There are many other masterpieces like The Naked Maya and the Clothed Maya by the Spanish artist Francisco de Goya, The Los Meninist by Diego Velázquez, and The Sight by Jan Brugelai and Peter Paul Rubens. It is a museum which art lovers cannot miss. The next stop of our adventure is Barcelona. Please subscribe to our channel to stay tuned.